this sort of test really highlights, you know, this, yeah. isn't, this isn't like, oh, you should maybe insulate your house better. No, this told yeah, you, this is you've like, got an icy gale blowing yeah, through your kitchen. Dirty great hole under your kitchen sink yeah. and it needs fixing. Today, we're looking at a technology that can be used on every property to change it from being like this to being more like this. Mm. Welcome to the Everything Electric Show. If you like everything electric, then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney in Australia on March the 11th and 12th. So, hi, Dean. Thanks for joining us today. It's very good of you. Um, I just want to know, really, basically, what is an air permeability test? An air permeability test is a way of testing how leaky a house is. So, um, the, the principle behind it is, and, and all the theory, is that you could have the best insulation in the world, but if there's a, a, a hole around the pipe that goes through the wall and all the air leaks out, you've wasted your money on the insulation. And it takes a huge amount of energy to warm all the air inside your house. And if that's constantly leaking out, especially when it's cold and windy in the, in the middle of winter, uh, it's going to cost you a fortune. Uh, it's going to be cold and drafty. You hear noises from outside more. It's not going to be comfortable and it's going to burn a whole load of gas and right. CO2 emissions. And doing an air permeability test allows you to walk around the house. Um, they basically put a fan on the front door and suck the air out. So it's, right. like, it's, like, the, it's like the negative. It's like the, the, oh, the inverse of what normally the, what happens. Normally happens. Yeah. So you can see what's happening and it makes it much more obvious. You so can find what, where you, you would off. be sucking cold air into the house when you evacuate the air. You're yes, gonna, exactly. Right, and right. you can go around and see where all the cold air is coming in. You yeah. can feel where the, you know, uh, the, the air is blowing in um, and seal the leaks up. Um, and it's a, it's a cheap thing to do um, right. and it's really effective. So can we go and see what they're actually doing Yeah, let's, now? let's go okay. and have a look. Oh, now I'm beginning to get the idea. Then. So that, that's the front door. Yes, yep. It's basically a really big fan. Um, and how it works is we switch the fan on. Right. There's a, a red pipe and a blue pipe. They go out, one goes outside, one goes inside. Right. And those pipes measure the air pressure difference between the outside and the inside right. while the fan's going and using some really clever software and information that you input about the property. Right. It can give it gives you a score, right, so then you I know see. how leaky the house is yeah. or not. Right, and from that you can calculate kind of energy cost and savings. Right, and all sorts. And of could you then stuff. maybe temporarily block up the major holes that you found and try it again Absolutely, and see? Absolutely, yeah. Right, right. So we can work out exactly how much money is being saved right. by doing this, um, and we can kind of put some science behind it, right. get some numbers and. And find out financially the kind of benefit the for this. Benefit and, of it. That's yeah, fantastic. yeah. So how does that? How do we start that? Is there a, is there a switch somewhere? There's, to... there's, there's a there isn't a big red button. Press that button. <gasps> oh my god! So I'm not feeling anything yet, Dean. I mean, it feels other yeah. than I can hear the noise. So the, the way we find out precisely where the leaks are coming from, close all the doors in the house while right. the fan's running, and open the doors one okay. at a time. And you see the pressure there you feel oh my god that's not that's not like a slight leak that's wind coming through here yeah so that on. wind's got to come from something and it's cold <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing when you oh, that isn't a little bit of air that's no. a lot so that we, we've identified there's yeah. some big holes somewhere right. in the kitchen So a loft hatch is one of the key areas where a lot of air leaks out. Right. So obviously we can, while well we've got the fan running, we can see if we've got any air leaking through this one. And I mean, I'm very we, confident we, we have. We can, we can already feel it's, it, actually. That, that side of my head is colder <laughs> already. Yes. Than that. It's got, so it's, that's amazing. So you give me this very, very high-tech piece of equipment. High, yeah, some high-tech measure. Look at that. And, yeah. You see that? Yeah, that is blowing about. Yeah. Incredible, isn't it? That is amazing because you not would not think that. You like, wouldn't if you know just that. Up, no. And this is the, this is the beauty of doing the kind of the invert of, right. of what's happening, yeah. sucking all the air out of the house through the through the door. It highlights things like this that you wouldn't otherwise be aware of. Right. Are really, you know, this is 
it's it's costing a lot of money. It's costing <laughs> a lot of money. But I mean, also to fix it, it's not like you've got to fit new windows or put no, a new door. No, this is like very easy to really fix. Really low hanging fruit, low carbon footprint, low cost yeah. to, the, to the fix. It's yeah. a walk down to your local DIY store and buy some Get some, some sticky, sealant. some sticky yeah, sealant the sticky around back the foam and sealant yeah, yeah. And Stick it on. It would make a huge yeah. difference because that is that is crazy. Yeah, that is really proper. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of energy. It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So for people watching this now, is there some quick tips of just simple things they can do to help yeah. decrease the amount of cold air blowing in there? Yeah, definitely. Well, a quick summary is things like fireplaces, pipes through, through walls, walls yeah. where you've got anywhere you've got um, holes going through walls, bottoms of skirting boards quite often, right. external so, yeah. doors, windows, um, uh, light fittings. Yeah, obviously, there's quick fixes. Yeah. You can go down to your local DIY store, buy tape, basking tape, yeah. uh, foam sealants, Try and get some old, you know, that they're going to throw away, some silicon that you get cheap. Right. So, you know, uh, use that to seal around the bottom of the skirting boards. Right. It all makes a really big difference. Yeah. And then obviously be mindful of it in the long term planning of home improvements and things like pin spots. Yeah. To, to avoid uh, things like that. But then the, the cost savings have got to be noticeable. I mean, that must be a really good thing if you've had your house tested and you go, right, I'm going to seal up the loft hatch, I'm going to seal up yeah. that back door, I'm going to make sure that's going right. Would you you you, yeah, would, so, you would have noticeable energy um, savings? Yeah. So from consultations we've had with the um, the companies do, that produce the EPC energy certificates, yeah, we've estimated that from the, from the trials we've done, we're looking between ten and twenty percent improvement in right. energy efficiency. Very noticeable. Yeah. It's substantial. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely worth. And uh, if you spread that out over the whole country, you're looking at enormous staggering of energy. savings. Yeah. yeah. And Just, money. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. wasting so much money. Right, but then what about, so if, if you do seal your house up, and the one thing I'm thinking of is like the condensation and no, no fresh air coming in your house. I mean, in the summer, it's not really a problem. You can have a window open, but yeah. in the winter, does that not have an, a kind of negative effect on the house? It's, it's a really good point. Um, one, one thing that we, to clarify, we're measuring with the air permeability is we're, me we're measuring uncontrolled ventilation. Right, yes. And there's, That you there's, might not know about at all. Exactly yeah. that, yeah. So, so things like extractors, we actually tape them up for the test. Right. So normally, you trickle vents on windows, extractor fans, yeah. vents for boilers. Obviously, right. you don't seal those up. And cookers um, and all that. So that it, yeah. yeah. So this is a relatively new house. I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, with new, I know new houses are being tested, but could you do the same test on a, like an older property, even quite an old one? Yeah, so an, any house, right. same rules apply, same physics applies everywhere. Um, if you've got a hole, you've got hot air leaking out of it, you're losing money. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's important to get on, on any type of property. Right. Yeah. And can you get, because I'm, I'm intrigued to know what this house scores. I mean, can you, do you know what, what the score is here? Uh, the, the score on this house, we've seen the initial results looks around, it's about eight to nine. Um, right. Which is not terrible, is it? It's it, not yeah, terrible. So. This is, ironically, a, a pretty good house, to right. be honest. Um, and there are some key aspects, the actual construction methods specifically to this right. house that have helped a lot with that and it's that it's got a solid floor downstairs right and it's got the traditional plaster sadly a lot of the new build houses now are all the dot and dab plaster method right. so there's a gap behind the plasterboard and the block work and it doesn't seal up right and all the warm air kind of flows Can through flow the building envelope <laughs> and outside and leaks yeah. like a sieve for some context around how good is a good score and how airtight is too airtight there's the scores on average, are estimated to be around a score of 15 across the whole of the UK. Right. Building regulations in 2006 said you have to score 10 or lower. Right. And it's now reduced that threshold down to it has to be five or lower. Right. And it's quite quite an effort to achieve a score of five or lower. Yeah. The general consensus is that um, only below a score of three do you need to start worrying about air permeability. That you might need to, to do like, something need about more it. More ventilation. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's so when it's your not, house is almost a sort of vacuum. Box, yeah, uh, ultra sealed. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. have to apply common sense and make sure you you, you really need good ventilation. Yeah. But in a in a perfect world, you'd have a completely sealed house, but with mechanical heat exchanger ventilation, right. filters, and everything. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, we're a long way from that at the moment, yeah. but this is a step, a first step in Towards that direction. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some good news: regulation has changed recently. They have to test every new build house. Right. It used to be, make one work and pass. Right. With the existing housing stock, obviously, the vast majority of houses in the UK are not new builds. Yeah. 
and the same physics applies to the house. Um, so I think it's really important to have air, perme air permeability testing on those as well. Um, now, one of the, the problems with the regulations at the moment, there's a, there's a really key aspect that on the, yeah, I'm sure everyone's heard of like the, the EPC, when you buy a house, engine yeah. performance certificate. Yeah. Like when you get a fridge and it gives you a score. It gives you the little bars and tells F you how much and, energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Houses have the same. Right. Now, on a new build, the air permeability score directly affects the result. Right. On existing housing stock, they use some different software called RDSAP, and there just isn't an option to put the air permeability score in there. Right. They have an assumed score of 15. Right. Which is a bit annoying. But the, the real irritation for me is that it causes a massive um, problem for uh, housing associations, um, homeowners, private landlords, uh, councils, because they don't have an incentive to carry out this work. Right. Now this work is some of the, it's the lowest hanging fruit in it's, my opinion. It's the cheapest thing you can it's do to cheap. your house. Yeah. It's quick, it's easy, it's, it doesn't have a huge carbon footprint attached to it because you're yeah. not having to manufacture a big shiny thing no. halfway across the world and ship it and all the rest of it. Um, it's really low hanging fruit and it makes a big difference now. Um, there, there aren't enough people out there testing and, and, and doing it right. um, at the moment, but hopefully that'll it'll become a thing. Yeah. But for it to become a thing, uh, these councils need to be asking for the work to be done. Yeah. And it, it, it comes down to funding now. Uh, councils have got funds for helping decarbonise projects, but the problem is they can't spend money on air permeability testing right. because they can't show an improvement because the box on the software is greyed out and you can't put the you score can't in. You can't put anything in it. That's <laughs> so we know it works, yeah, yeah. and we know we're talking 10-20% yeah. improvement in efficiency, but the councils rightly have to justify where they spend the money. Right. And when you say, well, let's spend however much per house on an air permeability test, yeah. relatively modest amount. Very small amount. Yeah. They go, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Yeah. We can't show where the improvement is and we have to justify where we spend our money. Right. What we, need, what we need people to do is send a link to this video to their local council. Yes. And say, pull your finger out. Yes, right. Or no, MP, fact, put your finger in the hole in the yes. wall because that's where the cold air is coming in. <laughs> yeah, I'll stood there with it. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's really, it, it's such a small piece of legislation. Yeah. But you imagine... 10 to 20 percent improvement in efficiency on all the buildings across yeah, the whole of the UK. Huge it's enormous. Yeah. It's an enormous amount of energy yeah. and money that's just been wasted and yeah. just gone out to the atmosphere yeah. and gone away. It's um, it's an absolute tragedy. So if people want to have a, an, an, an air permeability test, where, where's the best place for them to head to find out more? Uh, the best places at the moment uh, there's a, an organisation called Atma, another testing body called Elmhurst and they have a list of accredited air permeability tested engineers on their website. Um, try and find one locally. Right. Uh, probably a good idea to, to point the engineers in the direction of this video to explain what they're wanting them to do. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, get a, get a test booked. So we'll put all the links to that in the show notes for this yeah. episode. Yeah. That's great. I mean, as you said, it is such a, a, a simple and cheap, fit, real big change to your house and to your energy Absolutely, bills. Is yeah. The potential yeah. for it is amazing. I mean, some people might live in lovely houses that are really well sealed yeah. already, but I know some houses that definitely aren't, including mine. There's yeah. bits yeah. where I know we're yeah. leaking. We, like all, we all know bits. And yeah. Uh, yeah, identifying those is, is really important. Well, big thanks to Dina. It's been a really fascinating look at the process and the technology that isn't that well known, but it really should be. I mean, we should all be having this done and we should all be plugging the leaks in our houses. So thanks also to the testing team from Nats and our homeowners, Matthew and Ruth. All the links are in the description box below. And remember, all our home energy episodes are now here on the Everything Electric Show. And I really hope you've enjoyed this particular episode. Please do like, subscribe, and most importantly, share this episode so we can help more homeowners. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.